Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great day. Um, so my name is Stephanie Stombach, and I'm with the Maine Department of Education Child Nutrition Office. Um, and I'm going to talk about the local foods funding for school year 2024. And then I'll also do an overview and a refresher of some of our other farm and seed to school programs. Um, just wanted to remind everyone that this webinar is being recorded and it, it will be available on our website um, at a later time. Um, and uh, we will answer questions at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions um, that come up during the presentation, uh, feel free to enter them into the chat box and we will address them at that time. All right, so let's dive in. So this is our agenda for the afternoon. Um, first, we'll talk about the local foods funding for school year 2024. Um, so we'll talk about the federal and um, the state local foods funding. Um, then I will talk about the Harvest of the Month program, uh, Fisherman Feeding Mainers program, and Maine Harvest Lunch Week which happened um, just last week. Um, and with all of the funding sources um, that have come down the, the pike, um, I'll talk about some resources that are available for, for schools, so culinary and farm videos, um, and then we'll wrap things up with the USDA Farm to School Census. All right, so we're gonna start with the Federal Local Foods for Schools. Um, program that's available this year, and um, we call this LFS in our office. Um, so this is a brand new program, um, and districts um, that participate must have opted into it, um, and it's funding from um, the federal government to support local foods purchases. All right. Um, so more details on the federal local foods for schools. Um, so this is a 100% reimbursement program. Um, so um, that means if $500 in local carrots um, is spent, then $500 are returned. Um, and um, the allocation or funding amount is based on district enrollment. Um, so if you're a larger district, you'll get a larger amount of money. And for smaller, um, it'll be a smaller portion because um, it's prorated based on enrollment. Um, these um, allocations are posted on our LFS webpage, um, which I'll show you in a few slides. Um, and all foods purchased must be grown and produced in Maine. So this is the definition of local um, as far as the federal local foods is concerned. Um, with this funding source, there is a focus on small and socially disadvantaged farmers. Um, in Maine, most if not all um, are considered small farms. Um, however, socially disadvantaged um, might be a little more of a challenge depending on where you're located. So we've created some resources to help um, make those connections. And I should also say that it's a focus and not a mandate to buy from the small and socially disadvantaged, but steps should be taken to um, purchase from them. So as far as allowable purchases with the fund, um, this includes minimally processed local produce, such as fruits and vegetables, um, dairy and protein items, so no livestock. Um, so um, this would this would mean no whole animals can be um, purchased. However, you can buy the end product of um, that protein item. So ground beef, shaved steak, those would all be allowed. Um, there's also um, it also includes other minimally processed foods such as marinara sauce and salsa. Um, those are all allowable. As far as the programs that um, you can spend this money in, it only applies to national school lunch and 
school breakfast program. Um, and claims are submitted in CMP web. So it's it's really important to know for each funding source where um, you go to claim uh, that money. So for um, the federal local foods that is completed in CMP web. Um, and as we have mentioned on the Thursday update, um, currently you can't file a claim for the federal local foods, um, but we'll let everyone know um, when they can be filed. All right, as far as um, LFS claims go in CMP web, um, so like I mentioned, it's completed um, through CNP web electronically, and you must upload the summary page and receipts. Um, and so it's important to make sure that both of these are uploaded into the system when you can file a claim, because the summary page includes a lot of information that we need um, when we file reports with USDA, because we do have to report a lot of this information um, to USDA. We also have a help documents um, tab in CMP web that includes instructions for filing um, an LFS claim. So be sure to check that out if you haven't done it in the past um, with the state local foods fund, because it's a step-by-step -step instructions for how to do that. Um, it's also part of, it will be part of your reimbursement check under local produce. Um, so when you get that direct deposit um, that you typically would for your monthly claim for breakfast and lunch, you'll see a separate item for local produce and that is your federal um, reimbursement amount. As far as the receipts that get uploaded, um, so they must clearly show what items you're seeking reimbursement for, such as highlighting. Um, and also it must show that they are from Maine because it has to be a Maine product. So for, um, so for the invoice from a distributor such as Dennis Paper, um, they've highlighted the um, tofu from Hewa Tofu. Um, it specifies it's a Maine company, so that's good. And then the, the one on the right from um, the local farm, it shows that they are from Maine. And typically with farms, um, we'll see their address on the invoice. And so we can easily um, check to make sure that it is a Maine, a Maine farm and Maine product. Um, but if it if it wasn't only if it wasn't explicitly stated on the invoice that it's a Maine product, um, you would have to reach out to your distributor. Um, to show proof that those items were in fact local from Maine. So I wanted to show you where to find all the resources for um, the LFS, so the federal fund. Um, so what you're gonna do is go to our homepage. You're gonna click on programs um, and then you'll see all of the icons show up for our different programs. So you're gonna find Farm and Seed of School, which is the, um, the pot with the fish and, and plant. Um, so you're gonna click on that. Then that will take you to the page that has the farm and the, and the boat um, on that page. So you're gonna click on Federal Local Foods for Schools. And then that will um, take you to where all the resources are um, that we're talking about today as well as um, the allocations by district and also how to file a claim. So it has all the information that you would need for this program. Um, we wanted to provide some resources to connect with farmers because we know um, this might be, or local purchasing might be new for, for some districts this year. Um, so we've, put together a farm slash producer list on that web page. And so um, this isn't, I guess, what you would consider like an approved list. It's just, it should be used um, as a guide and maybe some farm uh, relationships, uh, partnerships to develop 
um, because it's a list of farms and distributors that were purchased from last year, last school year. Um, and it's not an exhaustive list. So if you want to buy from other local producers that are not on that list, you can, um, as well as distributors. So I just wanted to, to point that out because I've gotten some questions on it. So it, it's, it's a resource that's available. And then we also have a farm to school map, which I, I put a screenshot on this slide. So it's a visual of where in Maine you can purchase from, uh, from local farmers. And that is also pulled from the, the farm producer list. And then um, we've also created a resource um, which includes socially disadvantaged farms by county and the school districts that have opted into the LFS um, money to try to make some of those connections. You'll notice that in some counties, there's um, definitely more um, farms than others that meet the, the socially disadvantaged um, definition. Um, but I know there are some distributors that that um, might carry some of those products. So um, it wouldn't hurt to reach out to your to your distributor um, and see what they what they can offer for for those farms that they work with. All right, so moving on to the State Local Foods Fund, or LFF for short. Um, so this fund has been around for several years, and in 2019, um, it became a permanent funding source through the state legislature. Um, it's available to all districts, and you don't have to opt into it like you did with the federal um, federal fund. Um, and we are lucky in Maine to have a permanent local foods purchasing incentive because not all states do. So, so we are lucky to have this. So as far as this funding source goes, so it, it works by reimbursing a dollar for every $3 spent. So it's the one in three um, program. So an easy for easy math, if you spend $300 in local carrots, you'll get $100 back. Um, as far as the dollar amount, it's $5,000 um, per school district, regardless of size. Um, and you get, um, you're entitled to that $5,000 every school year. And if you attend a DOE local foods training, um, you can qualify for an additional $500. Um, and I just wanted to let everyone know this training counts um, towards the DOE local foods training. Um, as far as the definition of local for the state uh, state local foods fund, it's all foods purchased must be grown or produced in Maine. So here are some allowable purchases with the fund. So local produce, fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, a, a caveat between this one and the federal is this one only allows value added dairy only. So no fluid milk, like with the other funding source. Um, so only cheese and yogurt would be allowed as far as dairy goes. Um, it does allow protein items. So um, for example, livestock, if you want to purchase a whole animal, which a few, um, few school districts um, will purchase a whole animal, such as a, a whole cow, um, to be processed um, into ground beef or um, beef patties, and that's allowed with this funding. Um, if this is something you do, just make sure that the processing facility is either USDA or state inspected, because that, that's a requirement for um, processing meat and poultry. As far as the, the programs that this funding um, can be used towards. Um, it includes national school lunch, school breakfast, and the summer food service program. Um, and claims are submitted outside of CMP web. So this is really important because we have had some people um, try to submit claims in CMP web, um, but for the state funding source, it, it needs to be outside of the system. 
So if you would like to submit um, a state local foods claim, um, the procedure is on our webpage. Um, so essentially what you'll do is email this. So there is a summary page, um, a separate one for the state fund. Um, so you'll upload that in receipts, or I should say email this in, in the receipts to Jody. Um, and like I said, the procedures on our website um, for how to go about doing that. And because this is um, done outside of the system, a separate check is sent um, to the district. So it's not part of your regular um, reimbursement check. It's separate because it's outside of the system. So just wanted to make, make everyone aware of that. Federal is in CMP web, state is emailed, so outside of the system. And then I wanted to show you how to get to the, st the state local foods webpage. So you're gonna go um, to the Farm and Sea to School icon under programs. You're gonna click on the state local foods fund, and then it will take you to um, how to go about filing a claim as well as other information. I also wanted to take the time um, to talk to you about some new changes with the state local foods fund that take effect in October, um, so next month. Um, so there was legislation that passed this year um, to expand the definition of allowable processed and value added products that can be reimbursed in the fund. In the past, it was just minimally, um, minimally processed, but they but it was changed to allow for processed items. And this is because the fund is still underutilized even after expanding from produce to protein and dairy, um, it still is underutilized. So um, in an effort to find more ways to make it more flexible and for schools to use their money, um, this change was made in the law. And so with this change, it designates DOE or our office to create standards for allowable processed items. Um, so this is the criteria that we're looking at. Um, so if a product um, has 51% or more agricultural raw materials that have been grown, harvested, or produced in Maine by weight or volume, um, this would be allowable in the fund. So essentially 51% 50, or more of the ingredients must be from Maine. Um, and we will need documentation to support this. And we're looking at a product formulation statement, um, which shows by weight or volume, the ingredients in the product and making sure that it's, that 51% of those ingredients are from main um, products. Um, so who will be responsible for submitting this information? So main producers and processors um, will um, submit the documentation. Um, there will be an application to complete a quick online application um, or MS form and then um, they'll have to attach the product formulation statement. And then um, that will be reviewed by main DOE um, and then we'll work on approving that request. So it will be done by processors because um, it's information about their, their products. So this is a very basic example of what that might look like um, it's it, it will be in our a template that we're going to provide, but I just wanted to share like a really basic example. Um, so it, it would include the product name. Um, in this case, it's bread, so it's best for bread. So sourdough loaf um, ingredients in this case are listed in weights. So you would have whole wheat flour, which is um, 16 ounces and um, it's from Maine Grains, which is a Maine product. Um, water is four ounces, sea salt is 0.5 ounces, and 
in looking at um, the ingredients listed in weights, the product meets 51% of the main ingredients definition. So again, I know this is a super simplified example, but I just wanted to show um, some of the information that's gonna be requested. All right, so this is another question I've been getting a lot is where can I buy local products? And um, there really is a lot of flexibility. So it can be direct um, from a farm, a cooperative, a food hub, local food processor and a food distributor. Um, so it, it really is up to you as to um, where you wanna purchase from. Um, and again, with, with um, the federal local foods, there is a focus on socially disadvantaged farms. Um, so if you, if you are buying from a food distributor, um, it would be a, a good idea to just have a conversation about, um, you know, what producers do you work with and if they, if they would meet that criteria. And we do have a list of um, the ones that we're aware of on our website so that that can also be a starting point. Um, this is another resource that is hot off the press and it was included in last week's Thursday update. Um, so it's a list of allowable foods based on the funding source. And I also included supply chain assistance um, just because with all the different funding that's available, it's kind of helpful to see the breakdown. Um, and even though supply chain isn't, it's domestic grown foods, you can use it for local purchases too. So that's why I included it. And I just wanted to remind everyone that, again, this isn't an exhaustive list. Um, it should be used as a guide when purchasing, but there are um, more foods that would qualify. But just wanted um, something that could help when it comes to purchasing and, and, and kind of seeing um, which pot of money to allocate some of your purchases. So here are some tips for using the funds. Um, so our recommendation would be to use the federal funds first. And there's a couple reasons why. Um, one is that the federal, um, as, as we know right now, is not permanent and it's gonna go away in December of 2024. Um, so it makes sense to use that money and then tap into the state local foods fund, especially if you're a larger district because you have you have a substantial amount of money to spend. Um, and then another reason is that it avoids double dipping. Um, so it kind of makes it clearer for whoever's purchasing purchasing the food and then also like the business office. Um, perspective as well. Um, another tip would be to use the state fund for items that are not covered by LFS or the federal, such as processed foods um, that are not covered by the federal because that's only minimally processed. And then also if you want to purchase whole animals like livestock, you can use the state fund for that purpose because you can't use the federal for, for those foods. Another tip is to hold, you know, special events, a special meal um, during farm to school month, which is next month. Um, and there might be times of the year where you will have more lo local purchases. So in the fall and in the spring, um, based on what's in season. So, um, you know, maybe do a 100% local meal or something to use your money. Um, Another recommendation, if, if you're not currently participating in Harvest of the Month, is to pledge for that, um, especially if you're new to farm to school and maybe you didn't do a lot of local purchasing in the past because it's kind of a nice um, starting point to um, getting more local foods on your menu and establishing those relationships. 
So with that being said, that's a nice segue to talk about um, our other farm to school programs. Um, so Harvest of the Month, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with, um, it's been around since 2019, school year 2019. Um, it started off as a pilot and um, it expanded from there. Um, so it promotes the use of seasonally available local products in schools, institutions, and communities. Um, CACFP or the Child and Adult Care Food Program, they also participate in this as well. Um, and it highlights a different main product each month. So this is the Harvest of the Month calendar. Um, so it's highlighting a main product each month. So January is potatoes, February is root vegetables. Um, and like I mentioned, it, it really is a nice intro to farm to school program. Um, and it, um, in participating in this program, you commit to serving the harvest of the month ingredient just twice each month. So it's not super, super overwhelming or intimidating. Um, and in turn, we provide this beautiful material to help promote the program and market it to your students and communities. Um, so on the upper left hand corner, um, we have we provide meal tray posters, which can serve as your reimbursable meal signage. Um, we have promotional posters that you can post in the cafeteria or in a high traffic area. Um, and then we have fun facts and recipes. Um, so we've, I think a couple of years ago, we had some funding and we expanded the, um, the number of recipes for each harvest of the month item. It's not a requirement that you have to use those recipes, but it's, it's an option um, and can help kind of mix things up. Um, we also have recipes for home use. So if a recipe went really well with um, your students, they can take a recipe home and um, bring it to their families. And then on the bottom left hand side here is um, social media graphics that you can use if you have Facebook or Instagram. Um, the one in the middle here is a source card and I'll show you how you can um, use that to highlight the farm farm that you're promoting or showcasing. And then the last one is stickers. Um, I tried it stickers, um, which are for schools. These are request on a request basis, but for CACFP, um, we give them out to the CACFP sites. So this is how you can use the source card. Um, so the harvest of the month is russet potatoes and they are sourced from Stonifer Farm in Bodenham, Maine. Um, so these would be great for on the salad bar or on the serving line in the cafeteria um, to really share with um, students and even staff where the product is coming from. Um, they're very nice and colorful. Um, you can laminate them um, to, you know, make them last a little bit longer, but it's a nice way to highlight the local farmer that you're buying from or product. Um, this is an example of how to use the meal tray poster. Um, in this particular example, um, they served a local big potato bar with fixings. And again, they're really, really beautiful, really colorful. Um, and they're a great way to meet your reimbursable meal signage where you have to post all the different components you're offering um, for lunch at the beginning of the serving line. So um, I'm really, I'm really excited that we have these. And then again, social media graphics that have um, some of the artwork and just some fun facts that can be shared on different social media outlets. So 
So if you would like to participate in Harvest of the Month, there is a pledge form that you'll need to complete. Um, and we have asked that all schools and CACFP sites re-pledge this year, just to make sure that we have accurate information going forward, um, because we mail out the Harvest of the Month materials on a quarterly basis, so we want to make sure that it's that it's accurate. Um, and it really, it doesn't take long to fill out. It asks basic information such as contact info, district name, number of schools participating, um, and just make sure when you complete the mailing address that it's where you can receive mail. Um, no PO boxes because um, especially if you're a larger district and you have a lot of sites participating, um, the boxes can be pretty big so they would not fit in a PO box. So um, just be be aware of that and make sure that the address that's included is one where you can receive mail. All right, so moving on to the Fisherman Feeding Mainers program. Um, this is in partnership with the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association um, and was born out of the pandemic to help fishermen who lost important market channels during the pandemic um, and it pays them a fair fair price for the fish that um, they're catching. So um, it provides direct financial relief to fishermen by helping them supply food banks, schools, and families in need with healthy Maine seafood meals. So this is how it works. Um, so for schools, um, that participate. Um, it provides no cost local fish, local meaning Gulf of Maine fish, to participating schools and CACFP sites. And the fish um, that, um, that you would have access to are white flaky fish. So this includes hake, pollock, monkfish, cod, um, whatever is caught on that particular time frame. Um, and the fish is frozen, so um, it can be stored in your in your freezers and used at a time when it's on the menu and it and it works um, in your your menu timeline. Um, if you're interested in participating, there is an interest form on our website and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and basically what happens is um, someone from the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association um, will email um, the interested schools when fish is available for pickup. And the way it works right now is pickup um, takes place in Portland um, on Commercial Street. And it's um, specific dates and times. So there are there is a level of flexibility that's needed with this program, because again, it, it depends on um, when fish is available, um, depending on the fishing season. So this is what the interest form looks like. Um, and then once it's completed, and again, it's really quick, it's just email, first and last name. Um, are you available to pick up fish in Portland? And I think maybe a couple other questions, but it's pretty quick. Um, once you've completed the interest form, um, when fish does become available, um, it's typically Mary Hudson from the Maine Coast Fishermen Association. So she'll send details and other important logistics for pickup. Um, so, so she provides all the all of the necessary details. Um, some tips for this program. Um, like I said, fish is pending availability in the fishing season, so there's some busier times of year than others. Um, from what I've been told, August through January, February are typically higher volume months compared to um, the summer months um, or early summer. Um, and because of the... Um, sometimes unpredictability of, of when fish will be available. Um, whenever it is um, 
available for pickup, we recommend getting extra and freezing it just so when it's on your menu, um, you have some available that you can pull, pull from the freezer. Um, like I said, expect short notice and be flexible. Um, and we do have some districts that are working with um, another district for pickup if needed. Um, so you can like work it out with other schools that are currently participating as far as um, distribution to make sure you get it when it's available. Um, so I like this slide because it nicely summarizes who this program supports. So it supports the fishermen um, because um, fish is purchased directly from them. Um, it benefits the processors, um, the fish cutters in Portland that cut, package, and freeze the fish. It benefits the community, so the schools, food pantries, and other nutrition and secure mainers um, who receive this wonderful local fish. And then we also support schools by offering trainings and support in proper handling of fish and other recipes. All right, moving on to Maine Harvest Lunch Week. Um, so um, this has been celebrated for many years and was held last week. So September 18th through the 22nd. It's typically the third week in September, just so you know, as far as like planning calendars and, and such. Um, so it promotes fresh local food in school cafeterias. And there's also that teaching component of where food comes from from local farms, gardens, and greenhouses. Um, and I also wanted to um, give a shout out to York Schools for this beautiful um, pesto pizza that they made for Harvest Lunch Week um, that featured some local veggies for the pesto and other ingredients, but it's the colors are so vibrant that I wanted to, wanted to make sure I included it. Um, so more shout outs to these districts and thank you for sending these pictures to us. Um, so the tray picture is from Fort Kent schools and also Madawaska up in the county. Um, they made a New England boiled dinner with local potatoes, cabbage and blueberries. And then on the right hand side, we have another picture from York schools. Um, that made these really yummy salads. It looks like delicata squash possibly um, that was used. So um, really great examples of how to showcase local products during Harvest Lunch Week. So thank you to everyone that um, spent the time and effort bringing those products in for Maine Harvest Lunch Week because it really, it really is important. All right, so with all the local foods funding sources and programs that we've talked about up until this point, I just wanted to remind everyone that we have a ton of great culinary and farm videos on our website. Um, we also link to other organizations for their resources. Um, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned this to everyone because um, there's a lot of great recipe instruction and also, um, just local food um, businesses in Maine, like we feature some of those on our, our website as well. Um, so for example, with um, the Milk House, um, we did um, a video um, on site at their, their farm and their creamery um, and got some footage there. So that would be a great thing to share. Um, during harvest of the month when dairy is is the featured product um, and could also be used for farm to school month. So um, kind of connecting the, the cafeteria to the classroom. And then on the left hand side, we have some fish videos um, that Mike Flynn from RSU 12 helped us out with. There's some fish recipes and also safety uh, for safely handling fish in the school kitchen. So please 
check those out. Um, I did want to mention that for seafood, we also have some links to the Gulf of Maine Research um, Research Institutes. Um, they have a cafeteria toolkit that includes seafood recipes and I think some taste testing um, resources. And they also just recently launched a curriculum for middle school students specifically for seafood. So that's pretty awesome. Um, we also have a bunch of recipes and video instruction um, that we've done in our culinary classroom. We've done some pre-recorded videos um, and posted them on our webpage. Um, so the ones at the top here um, are from the Good Crust who came in and um, created some recipes like stromboli, um, pazzo garlic bread. Um, and then we also have some other like plant-based um, type uh, video instructions. So we have veggie burgers, a squash bake. Um, so there's quite a variety of videos. So um, if you ever need some inspiration or ideas, um, check these out on our webpage. And we also have more on our culinary classroom webpage as well. All right, so I know we've talked about a lot, so we're gonna wrap up uh, with the USDA Farm to School Census because um, that is knocking on our door and it's gonna happen next week. So what is the census? Um, so the, it's a nationwide um, Farm to School Census um, and it's a snapshot of Farm to School activities in the country and then individual states. Um, so, once the census is over and they've collected the results, you'd be able to see what it looks like in Maine. Um, it's a tool for growth and expansion of farm to school in the country. So, um, so it, it does ask questions related to maybe challenges with local purchasing and what's going well, what are the benefits? Um, and then USDA kind of tailors resources based on that. As far as who should complete, so it's emailed to the food service director, um, but you'll also likely need input from other school staff like teachers, garden coordinators, um, who would have a better sense of farm to school activities in the classroom. Um, so you could answer questions related to procurement, but um, some other ones you might need to pass along to other people that would better know the answers. So here are de uh, more details about the census. Um, so it's being completed by a third party. Um, so Decision Information Resources or DIR and Mathematica, um, they're the ones that are conducting the census and it's with all public charter and private SFAs or school districts that participate in the National School Lunch Program. Um, and it launches October 2nd, so next week. Um, and what will happen is DIR will email you a link to the census, and here is the email that it will come from. Um, so make sure to check your, you know, your spam, um, or if you see an email come across your inbox, um, don't delete it <laughs> because it's legit. Um, and it can be completed on your computer, on a smartphone, on a tablet, it's pretty um, user-friendly um, and it, it doesn't have to be completed all at once. Like you can leave it and come back, which is helpful. Um, I did wanna remind everyone that it's information from last school year um, and it takes about 30 minutes to complete. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and they are asking that even if you didn't have or participate in any farm to school activities last year to still complete the questions, because again, it's used as a baseline to see where, where schools are at. Um, so please, please complete. Um, and it has to be done by December of 2023. So you do, do have a couple months. Um, and if you have, 
any general questions about it, um, you can reach out um, and, and we'll also be putting reminders on the Thursday update as well um, as we get closer. All right, so that pretty much covers everything um, that we wanted to talk about today. So um, I am going to pass it over to Paula to see what we have for questions. We have a few, but I just want to let everybody know that the chat box wasn't working. So if you were unable to put your question in the chat box, please go over to the Q&A box. Um, people have been able to put some questions in there. So um, your first question, Steph, in protein category, does that include local seafood? Yes, it does. So you can purchase local seafood um, with the federal and the state. If we find a farm that is not listed, should we have you add it or should we ask them first? Um, so again, the list of farms is a resource. It's not like an approval list. So, so there's definitely freedom to buy from, like if you have a farm in mind that you wanna work with, you can just go ahead and purchase from them. I don't think you need, you don't need approval from us. Is the delivery cost, if applicable, of local farm and seed products reimbursable? Yes, for the federal local foods, we did include delivery as part of the cost. So you can get reimbursed for that. And our videos, can they be used by others on social media and newsletters giving us credit, of course? Yes. Absolutely. Yep, you can promote our videos and um, yeah, always welcome to. I'm just reading a couple of things, a couple of things I'll have you answer directly. Uh, okay, that is it. Oh, wait a minute, let me scroll a little bit further. Are each program's LFF and the federal level users together or separately? I'm not sure I understand the question. Can you repeat that again? Are each program's program LFF and the federal level users together or separately? Um. You can't use them at the same time, so there's no double dipping. But as far as users in CMP Web, you, um, if you are asking for reimbursement for federal LFS, you would need to be set up in CMP Web in order to do that. And if I didn't answer your question correctly, please email me or, or give me a call so I can clarify. What is the process to receive the extra $500 after attending this training? I knew that question would come up. <laughs> so if you could just send me an email um, and that you watched the entire training, just send me an email um, and I'll add you to the list. I also wanna note that I'll be sending certificates out. So, um, we do have a couple of people who I can't tell who they are because of the way they came into Zoom. Um, so if you do not get a certificate and you were here, please email me and we'll get that fixed. Um, but I should be getting those out later today, hopefully by the end of tomorrow. So you'll also have that. Great. Thanks, Paul. Would, you're welcome. Would supply chain assistance include delivery fees for local foods? I would have to look at the Q and A's for supply chain because I'm not sure, but um, federal LFS, we put that into our application to allow for the delivery, but I would have to, I need to double check supply chain. 
So this is a clarification question, Steph. So use all of the allocations for federal level first, then use local foods? Correct. That is our recommendation because the federal local foods goes away in December of 24, uh, 2024. So it's a, an 18 month grant program. So we just wanna make sure that we're using all the federal money first before the state. I am not seeing any more questions come up, Steph. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone who joined. And again, if you if there are any questions that come up after today, feel free to uh, reach me through email or, or give me a call. But thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your day.